Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Just got to keep winning, keep executing, do your job, and be physical. This is our game. This is what we've been working for. Do everything we need to during the week, and we go have fun Friday. We develop a good game plan, and we just have to go out there and execute that game plan. For us, it's day by day, and, and uh, you know, do everything we can to spend another week together. This is why these guys, you know, put in the hours and hours and hours of work. This is what uh, high school football is all about. Jason Dorfler is exactly right. This is what high school football is all about. Sectional championship night here on the Highlight Zone. You win, you bring home the trophy and advance to regionals and take a step closer to Lucas Oil Stadium. Speaking of steps, Josh Ayan gets this show off on the right foot. Hmm? <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, he kicks off things with your Highlight Zone game of the week. Josh. Uh, very clever, Glenn. Well, the last time the Saints were in class 4A, they won the state title. But after four seasons up in 5A, Dwanger is back where they began. Leo, meanwhile, is no stranger to a sectional title game. The good news is the Lions in the sectional championship for the fifth year in a row. Bad news, though, they came up short each of the last four years. Hmm. Dwanger at Leo. It's your highlight zone game of the week. After a lot of success in the regular season in recent years, Lions are trying to get over the hump in the playoffs. Leo looking for its first sectional title since 2011. And how about this for a good start? It's Darius Carter. Man, this guy has stepped up in recent weeks. Opening drive touchdown for Carter and Leo up 7-0 at the end of the first. But the Saints of Bishop Flanger come marching right back. That is Toby Tittman from a few yards out. We are all knotted up at seven apiece, but this Leo Lions squad would punch right back. It's Carter. Once again, Carter rushing for 112 yards in this one. He would help put Leo up 14 to seven at half. And Jason Dorfler and company looking pretty solid coming out of the break. It is Kyler Decker to Kellen Holbert. What a pretty pitch and catch there. Leo up 21 to seven. They would also tack on a field goal to take a 24 to seven lead. Meanwhile, Bishop Dwanger looking for any sort of spark or should I say divine intervention? That's Carter Minix on the tip drill, 63 yards out, and Dwanger back within two scores, 24 to 13. But this Leo team would shut the door for good right here. It is Caden Hurst with a burst. The Ohio University commit scoring from 78 yards out. Hurst, eight catches, 175 yards, and it is pandemonium for the Purple Pride as the Leo Lions or sectional champions for the first time in a dozen years, they win 31 to 13. This is incredible. Uh, the last three years we've, we've been here and we came up short. And to finally do it and to be the first one to do it for Coach Dorfler means a ton, ton to us. It feels amazing. We all grinded for this. We all, we all had the talent to do this and we got the job done. And our team is amazing. I love every single one of them. I love all of our coaches. And they, they, they gave us a great game plan and we went out here and we executed it. They've, they've battled and battled and battled and, um, you know, they're a resilient group and our 17 seniors deserve this. You know, they've been through the, through the battle, so very happy for them. Bishop Dwinger ends their season 6-6, six and six, while Leo will play the winner of Kokomo and Mississippi next Friday at the Regionals. Glenn, take it away. Ah, oh, you read my mind, Joshua. As for that uh, Kokomo Mississippi matchup, we head down to Grant County. Yeah, we made the drive. Kokomo 9-2, ranked 9th in the state in 4A. Mississippi 11-0. They're for real, ranked 5th first quarter. That was Mississippi's Elijah Monday having a pretty good Friday. He gets into the end zone from five yards out. Mississippi up 7-zip. Later in the second quarter, Nolan Quanderer to Andrew Monday, and he goes 76 yards, 14 zip Mississippi. In fact, Ole Miss led 24 to 7 at the half. Third quarter, Kokomo trying to get back in it. Kamarion Pollard with the touchdown here. That cuts it to a 10 point deficit, but it is Mississippi holding on to win 31 24. So, Mississippi will host Leo next week at regionals. In 5A at Spooler Stadium, a couple of SAC foes going head to head. Northside coming off a double by the Legends facing second rank Snyder. First place from scrimmage. Snyder looking good. Kieran Billingsley to Boston Conley. This goes for an even 50 yards on the first play of the game. Down to the four there. Uriah Buchanan would score on the next play to make it seven zip Snyder. First play on the ensuing drive. It's some defense. 
It's Landon Fry. He's uh, got that baseball thing, you know, committed to IU, but apparently can play some football as well. Interception there. Then the first play when Snyder gets the ball back on offense. This is Buchanan from 29 yards out. And Snyder led 14 to 0, 50 seconds into this game. A perfect picture, perfect start for the Panthers. Now 21 zip. It's Buchanan again with a short touchdown plunge there to make it 28 zip Snyder. You'll see Mr. Billingsley with a short TD of his own right here. It was 35 nothing after the first quarter and Snyder rolls on to regionals. They win a sectional championship 49 to 14. It feels great. Something we've been working for all week and through the season and things like that. So now it's time to focus on next week and get, you know, get going for whoever won the next game. Uh, Mike, I keep fighting to play together. Keep fighting to, you know, want to be together another week. Every team, every week, you're going to play a better team, you know, a good team, and and uh, you got to play better each Friday night to advance, and that's what it's all about, you know, survive and advance. Survive and advance, they do. Snyder advancing to play at Mishawaka next week. 6A football, Warsaw knocking off reigning state runner-up Carroll last Friday night. Could Bart Curtis and company take down perennial powerhouse Penn and do it on the road? It's a tough task. Penn striking first. This is actually the third play from scrimmage, and it's quarterback Nolan McCullough going 53 yards to the house. 7-zip Penn, you cannot stake the Kingsmen an early lead, especially at their place. Second quarter, Warsaw scoreless until this. This is Mason Smythe with a 46-yarder to get Warsaw on the board, but it would not be enough. Warsaw falls at Penn 31 to 10. Warsaw ends the season with an impressive 9 and 2 record. Last week, Garrett upset Heritage in Monroeville. Could the Railroaders keep it rolling this week against Delta? Well, first quarter was all about defense at Memorial Field. It's Garrett's Chase Egley with a stop for a no yard gain. Right there, zero yard pickup there from Bronson Edwards at the line of scrimmage. So it was 0 0 after one. Second quarter, Garrett ball, but the fumble is recovered here by Delta's Nathan Mayner, and the Eagles were in business. Watch them take advantage. Coming up here, it is Delta's Caden Bond taking the handoff from the 30 yard line, and he is gone. That gets the scoring started as Delta led seven to zip. Later, you're going to see a QB keeper from Edwards to make it 14 zip Delta at the half. Garrett put up a fight in this one, but Delta would eventually hold on to win 21 15. Garrett ending the season with a record of six and six. We are going to take a quick timeout, but after the break, we're going to tackle sectional championships in both 2A and in 1A. For Adam Central, the Jets on a quest to make it to Lucas Oil for the third year in a row. We're going to hit the road and follow the Jets down to Madison Grant to see if they can sock the Argyles. Plus, Bishop Lures, no stranger to playing in Indianapolis on Thanksgiving weekend. The Knights looking to dethrone the Squires of Manchester, while down in the parlor city, Bluffton looking to win its second straight sectional title, but the Tigers would have to get through a 9-2 Eastern team to do it. Those games more coming up next on The Zone. Where are the AC Jets? The Jets are flying high against Madison Grant. Stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. It's sectional time and we're in Bluffton and Highlight Zone is back. Last season, the Bluffton Tigers making some history. Coach Kunkel's team winning the program's first sectional title since 1988 and just their second ever sectional championship overall. To make it two in a row, the Tigers would have to complete a tough task down at Fred Park Field. The Eastern Comets 9-2 overall coming in. The Bluffton Tigers 9-2 as well. Tigers had already beaten 6th-ranked Alexandria and number 14 Eastbrook in the playoffs thus far. And, uh, you know, defense wins championships. Bluffton's in uh, pretty good company. That was Tucker Jenkins with the sack to keep it scoreless in the first. Then reward Mr. Jenkins. He pounds his way into the end zone. And Bluffton on the board first up 7-0. Second quarter action. Kamel Moore has been healthy the last few weeks and he has made a difference. The sophomore slamming his way in. He had 16 carries for 99 yards and that was an eight yard touchdown there to make it 14 0. Ensuing kick. Bluffton booting it away. Eastern nobody there. Ball pops out and Cooper Craig recovers. So Bluffton is in business and Daddy Kunks had it working. This is Hunter Wenger. Slamming it home for a touchdown. Bluffton led 20 to 0. And what an effort from the Bluffton Tigers tonight to beat a good 
Eastern Comet squad 41 to 6 the final from Fred Park Field. So Bluffton advancing to regionals. So the question now, who is Bluffton going to play next week? They would get the winner of this one. Lures on the road at Manchester and early on. It's all about Lures. It's all about the run game and it's all about Gio Jimenez. They call him shifty. He's good. He's into the end zone right there. Lures would miss the PAT, but they led six zip. More from Lures, more from Mr. Jimenez. The cutback right there, kind of Barry Sanders-esque from the senior for the Knights. He's in, and Lures now up 13 to zero, and there was no let up. You saw the offense from Lures was working. How about the special teams? Davion Surrey, the coaching staff, loves this guy. Punt return here for a touchdown, and Lures still in the first quarter against the Squires, up 20 to nothing. Second quarter action, Cohen McKenzie. The quarterback for Bishop Lures, you're going to see McKenzie looking for Jalen White, and uh, yeah, that's a thing of beauty. It's a touchdown, Lures, no problem. They win 42 to zero, so we got Bluffton at Lures next week for a regional championship. That will be your highlight zone game of the week. In 1A, Adam Central making the drive to Madison Grant, as did the highlight zone. Thanks to photographer J.R. Carmichael for hitting the road. Second ranked Jets facing 12th ranked Argyles. AC kind of got off to a slow start, but in the second quarter, they pick it up. 21-14 AC when Jack Hamilton goes in from 25 yards out, and it's 28-14 AC in the lead, and they put the pedal to the metal after that. Trevor Curry from Hamilton, 36 yards on that pitch and catch. And AC now up by three scores, and they would go up more. Third and goal, Jack Hamilton. What a job he's done taking over the quarterback position this season for Michael Mosier and company. It's a touchdown, 42-14. Then some defense from AC. Jarrett Smith. With the interception, number 82 is going to have a nice return on it as well. AC's offense in business. In fact, very next play, Trevor Curry. This Curry is spicy. 48-yard touchdown catch. AC wins 56-14 out of Central. They're going to hit the road next week to face Carroll of Flora for a regional championship. Over in Ohio, Division 4 Regional 14 quarterfinals. Van Wert on the road against the Shelby Whippets. That's yeah, a dog. Uh, first quarter, Van Wert's Brylin Parker. Now we've seen him on the highlight zone earlier this season, and Van Wert can definitely score the football. The offense looking good as Brylin Parker goes 65 yards for a touchdown in the first quarter. First score of the game, seven zip Van Wert, and there was a lot more scoring where that one came from. Second quarter, it's Brylin Parker to Connor Campbell for the touchdown. Campbell says that's mm -mm good, but Van Wert, they could score, but had trouble stopping Shelby as Van Wert falls. 71 to 41 the final there. Stay tuned. Your gem of the night and some basketball coming up next on the Highlight Zone. We're the Gale Rare Raiders. You're watching the Highlight Zone. Don't go anywhere. Yeah! I'm Bob Knight and I used to coach basketball a little bit. I just wanted to tell you people in the Fort Wayne area that you got a great opportunity to see a lot of good basketball here in the near future. And we're talking about the highlight zone. Whatever the hell the highlight zone is, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you got to tip your cap to a legend, the passing of Bob Knight, the biggest news, no doubt, on the Indiana sports scene this week. Last Friday, however, Leo's Riley Stewart etching his name in Leo football history. His last second field goal beating East Noble, earning the Highlight Zone's highest honor. As for this week, here is your Jeff of the Night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. We go back out to Leo and we're talking about Mr. Caden Hurst. This guy does it all. He throws touchdowns. He'll run for him on like a jet sweep. Dude returns kicks. He returns interceptions and also, you know, catches the football and goes 78 yards. Now that was the nail in the coffin against Bishop Dwinger. Check out the guys he makes miss. Made one guy miss, made the second guy miss, and that right there is a thing of beauty. That's why he's playing D1 football for the Ohio Bobcats next season. More importantly, this breaks, Le snaps Leo's streak of not having won a sectional since 2011. So congratulations to the Purple Pride on bringing home a big trophy for the trophy case and Caden Hurst and company with your Peter Franklin Jewelers gem, oh, the Knights. As for next Friday's regional championships, Snyder hits the road as Snyder will take on Mishawaka. That was a heck of a game last year. Snyder got off to a slow start in that one, but Kamari Juarez took over 
As Snyder went on the road, they're hoping it's not going to be that close this year in 4 a Leo makes the drive down to Mississippi. That Mississippi team pretty darn good. Uh, 2 a Bluffton at Bishop Lures. As I mentioned earlier, that will be your highlight zone game of the week. And in 1A, Adam Central, you know, Carol Flora, a really good program. That could be a test on the road for Michael Mosier and the Jets. <laughs> Tipping off this week, Noah Stuckey and the DeKalb Barons with their first game on the road against Lakeland. And it's Lakeland's Arlene Thompson with the bucket there in the second quarter. But the Barons with too much offense in this one. This is Ashley Cox with the board and the stick back and the cow up by double digits in the second quarter. Third quarter, you're going to see more from the battling and Barons as they made the drive to LaGrange tonight. This is Bree Fordyce. Gets it on uh, the second attempt for the Barons up and in. And DeKalb would take care of business in this one. They go on the road to win their opener 47-18 at Lakeland. College Hoops, IU with its second and final exhibition game. IU hosting Marion University. You see a moment of silence to honor Bob Knight before the game. And then they, you know, honored him with their play because they looked pretty darn sharp against Marion. That was Malik Renew with three of his 14 in the first half. And then it's CJ Gunn, the sophomore, popping one in for three. IU up by 14 at the break. Second half, it's Gunn on the breakaway, throwing it down as IU no problem, as you might expect with Mary in the final 94 to 61. Hoosiers take it. Next up, their regular season opener Tuesday night at home against Florida Gulf Coast. Closer to home, Huntington University hosting the annual Ness Brothers Classic. The Foresters facing Kentucky Christian and yeah, maybe early, but they are in midseason form. Check this out. Landon Jordan, the former former Busco Eagle hammering one down on the alley. -oop. That was the first bucket of the game. Zach Goodline on the feed there. Then watch Goodline with the steal. Goodline had 25 points on the game to lead the Foresters. That one an assist to Jordan, who had 13. Huntington up by six in the early going. And then it's Lane Sparks popping in a three. He had 16 on the game, and Huntington goes on to win this one at home. Coach Corey Alford in good spirits tonight, no doubt. 105-62 over Kentucky Christian. Final stop, we're talking the Schaefer Center, Indiana Tech Women's Volleyball. They came in 28-3. This is their final match of the regular season. Noel Van Ort with the serve there, and then it's Kinsey Wagner for uh, Siena Heights with the spike. In game one, a little bit later, you're going to see Taylor Paul with the block here for Indiana Tech. And that's good stuff if you're an Indiana Tech fan. Coming up later, it's going to be Taylor Sorg for Indiana Tech with a spike. But Indiana Tech suffers only its fourth losses of the season. Sienna Heights a winner 3-1. to one. The WHAC tournament starts next Wednesday. Well, that is going to do it for this sectional championship edition of the Highlight Zone. We'll be back next Friday for regionals right here on Fort Wayne's number one sports show.